I, 27, female, just got engaged to my longtime boyfriend, Jonathan, and I couldn't be happier about it. I told my parents last week, and even though they did sound happy and even congratulated me, I could feel that something was off. But I didn't think much of it. Yesterday, they called to tell me that they would only be able to attend for an hour at most, and on top of that, insisted that I get married in secret and hide the fact that I'm getting married from everyone. I couldn't even believe what they were asking me to do until they mentioned the reason. My sister, my younger sister Kelly, 24, female, is a brat. I know people usually say this about their sisters when they're kids, but we're both grown-ups and she's still a spoiled brat. We haven't spoken to each other for the last three years. She could never stand anyone else being the center of attention, even for a second, and my parents did nothing to discourage her attention-seeking tendencies. I finally cut her off when, on my 25th birthday, she got drunk and caused a scene in front of all my friends. I could have not invited her, but my parents talked me into it, and it was easier to give in than argue with them. She screamed in my face about how I was a loser and always will be and will never compare to her in front of all my friends, and would have even thrown her drink in my face, but my friends managed to stop her somehow. That was the last time we spoke before I blocked her from all my socials and went no contact with her. My parents weren't happy about it, but I couldn't help it anymore. I just couldn't take it anymore. I spent my entire childhood trying to make people take notice of me as well, but Kelly would somehow always make sure that that never happened. And I was done living in her shadow. I'd already moved out of my parents' house, so it was easy to cut her off, and that was the last I heard from her. My parents tried to get me to attend her wedding last year, but I wasn't interested at all. And thank goodness that I didn't go, since the guy she was marrying, who was supposed to be the love of her life, was my high school boyfriend. He dumped me one night before prom because Kelly had asked him out. She pretended to be all innocent, but I knew the truth. I cried for hours over that. That's how much Kelly despised me. But yeah, that was Kelly. And now she just got divorced because her husband has been cheating on her with his secretary for almost three months now. It's all hush-hush now, but eventually people are going to find out. She had an extravagant wedding, which my parents paid for, by the way. Something they're definitely not going to do for me. Now, my parents want me to keep my wedding low-key since they don't want my sister's peace to be disturbed at such a difficult time in her life. My dad even refused to walk me down the aisle since he wanted to be there for Kelly and suggested that I postpone the wedding. I couldn't even believe what they were asking of me, and I still can't. They just kept going on and on about how I should keep my wedding a secret for Kelly's sake and try not to make a big deal out of it to not hurt her. I was speechless, so I just hung up without saying a word. Honestly, I didn't even have anything to say to them. I guess I should have known that when it came down to it, my parents were always going to pick Kelly over me. I just found it a little difficult to believe that my parents are refusing to be there for me on what's supposed to be the happiest day of my life. It has been a few days since I talked to my parents and they've been texting and calling me nonstop to try and get me to stop sending out the wedding invitations to our relatives because then my sister would certainly find out about my wedding and they didn't want her to feel hurt. I finally broke down and I called them back to let them know that they weren't invited to my wedding either. I told them that I was done being the second choice for them always and that I no longer want them to be involved in my life anymore. Needless to say, they didn't take this kindly and my mom began to list all the things that they'd done for me to remind me that I owed them so much. So I reminded her that they'd done the bare minimum for me while going above and beyond for Kelly every time. They never cared and never will care about me as much as Kelly. And I finally get that now. I told them that no matter what, I'll still be sending out the invites to all our relatives in a few days and there's nothing they can say or do to stop me.
The argument got insanely heated from that point onwards and my parents went on to say the worst thing about me and how they were right to support Kelly since I was a waste of time and money and they should have kicked me out in high school itself when I tried to steal Kelly's boyfriend. Yeah, that's the story that Kelly told them. They told me that they'll make sure that people know what an awful person I am and how I'm trying to rub my wedding in my sister's face. Basically, they assured me that they're going to make sure that nobody attends my wedding if that's what it takes. Did I go too far? AITA for uninviting them? Their reaction was horrible, but they are my parents. Update 1. It's been a few days since I spoke to my parents and this morning I found a text from Kelly asking to meet me. Obviously I'm very suspicious about what this means since we haven't spoken for three days now and this is a really weird time for her to text. I texted her back saying that I was really busy and couldn't meet her and that whatever she needed to say could be said to me through text. But she's not ready to do that and is insisting that we meet. So now I'm really confused. Update 2. Okay, so I did meet her. I know most people advise me not to, but I just couldn't. And I'm kind of glad that I went to meet her. She's changed a lot. Like, really? She started off by apologizing to me, and I knew for a fact that she meant it because I could see tears in her eyes. She said that she was really and truly sorry for everything that she'd done to me so far and that she wished she could take all of it back. It was kind of weird since I'd never expected that I would ever hear any of this from Kelly of all people. And on top of that, I also learned a lot about my parents. Apparently, they were the ones who had drilled it into my sister's head that she would always have to try and outshine me in every possible way if she wanted to be their favorite. She said that this was in no way an excuse for what she'd done but just an explanation. And truly, that did explain a lot of things. Like it was my parents who told her that the boy I was dating was too good to be with someone like me and he deserved someone better like her, which is why she went after him in the first place. I was shattered to learn that I'd been blaming my sister for everything that had gone wrong between me and my parents, but it was actually the other way around. It was my parents who had ruined not only my self-esteem as a kid, but also ruined what could have been a healthy relationship between my sister and me. Both of us ended up crying at the cafe, and it was a little embarrassing, but totally worth it. We ended up hugging it out, and what's more is that now she's a bridesmaid too. She was super grateful since that would really help her take her mind off the divorce and everything else. Boy, I can't wait to find out how my parents react to this. Update 3. Okay, last update here. I'm a married woman now. I know this update has been long overdue, but I've just been so caught up with the wedding that I couldn't find the time to post. The wedding was everything that Jonathan and I ever dreamed about and I couldn't have been happier. And no, my parents didn't attend, but they did try to sabotage it by telling all my relatives about what an awful person I was and how this marriage was just a sham to put my sister down. But thankfully, I didn't even have to say anything in my defense since this time, Kelly herself cleared everything up. She wrote a long post and put it up on social media for all our relatives to see where she talked about how it was our parents who were responsible for always pitting us against one another and creating this horrible rivalry between us. Of course, mom and dad were mad, but there was nothing much they could do except scream at us on the phone since both of us had gone no contact with them. So my relatives did end up attending our wedding and even told us that we'd done the right thing by cutting them out of our lives and that most of them had done the same as well since what they'd done was truly messed up. Kelly and I are slowly trying to rebuild our relationship and make up for all the lost time. Jonathan, who had been my rock throughout all of this, is also happy now I don't speak to my parents since they would never miss an opportunity to put him down either. Basically, all of us are better off now that we don't speak to my toxic parents anymore. And I'm glad that I cut them off. They don't deserve me or Kelly. I'm finally happy now. 
NTA, your parents are crazy. I can't believe someone would put their own daughters through something like this. I mean, seriously, this was so messed up. I feel bad for you as well as your sister. Your parents truly are the worst. Good for you that you went no contact, OP. You guys deserve better and best wishes for you and Jonathan. Gosh, that was something. I remember one of my friend's parents was also constantly pitting her and her brother against each other. Even they ended up cutting the parents out of their lives. This should teach all such messed up people a lesson. You simply do not make your children compete. They're the AH. NTA, I hope you and Kelly are happy now, OP. You guys should also try therapy to undo God knows how many years of trauma. And best of luck to you and Jonathan as well. Sending lots of love. Next story. I, 38, female, have three kids, 15 female, 13 male, and 9 male, with my husband, 38 male. Both my side and my husband's side of the family live close, so we see each other all the time. On my side of the family, we get together every Friday at either my house or one of my siblings' houses for pizza. This past weekend, I was the one hosting pizza night. Our 13-year-old has his friends over that night, which sometimes happens on these nights, and there hasn't been an issue before this. My son's baseball teammates were over. One of his friends, Carson, got diagnosed as autistic a few months ago. This isn't particularly surprising as something was always different with him. He's still a popular, smart boy, but it all made sense when he was diagnosed. My son and his friends are very confident in themselves, including Carson. And Carson's new special interest after baseball is his autism. Carson believes his autism makes him who he is. He is insanely smart, helps my son and his friends with homework, and he can tell you anything about baseball. Carson, my son, and his friends also like making jokes about themselves. One of his friends is gay and jokes about his sexuality. My husband and I have made sure to talk to the boys about knowing what is and isn't appropriate to know their boundaries. Carson will make jokes about his autism, usually directed at mocking what he believes are ableist parents, mocking anti-vaxxers, etc. Carson was upstairs with my son and their other friends before my husband and I got home. We had the family come over after school, work, and when pizza was ready, Everyone came to the kitchen and dining room. Carson had a shirt on that said, I love someone with allism. Allism is apparently a word autistics uses for people who aren't autistic. We all sat down and my sister made a comment about the shirt. My sister and her husband have a severely autistic son. He's 15 and can't do much on his own. My sister asked what the shirt meant and said it wasn't funny. It started escalating there with my son and his friends getting rowdy. Carson then said something about not being a burden, to which my sister said, For some of my friends, their children's autism are burdens. Their children are burdens. At that point, I screamed at everyone to shut up and told my sister and her husband to leave. Since then, tensions have been pretty high, and we don't even know if there will be a pizza night next week. My sister and her husband have only dug their heels in their position. My son is very upset and cried to us about how his aunt could see someone like Carson, a longtime friend, as a burden. Most of my family is siding with my sister saying that children should respect their elders and said Carson is full of himself. My son is still very hurt by those comments and I feel like he has a right to be and haven't apologized to my sister. A-I-T-A? N-T-A, your sister got into a shouting match with a 13-year-old about a snarky shirt. She has a severely autistic child and doesn't know what holistic means. To me, it sounds like she's got a morality complex about raising such a burden, and Carson directly challenged it. It's exactly what the shirt was meant to do, and she got hooked. She's ableist and deserved to be called out. Edit. Okay, holistic is less common than I thought, but the rest stands. NTA, and thank you for standing up for us. 
My parents scapegoated me because I was so difficult a baby. And turns out I am autistic. Your sister sees her kid as a burden, just like my parents, and tried to project that feeling onto Carson. I'm glad you put your foot down with her. Thank you. NTA, your grown-ass sister picked a fight with a 13-year-old boy, and she doesn't even have a good argument. He has autism, and he's allowed to express his feelings around it. If she has such an issue hearing others' opinions on this, then she needs a good therapist to vent to. What she doesn't need to do is attack a 13-year-old who has newly been diagnosed and who is navigating what that means to him. FFS. Next story. For context, my son, Elijah, is 23 and lives at home partially due to a physical disability. He's currently taking classes online to earn a business degree. He has been with his current and first-time girlfriend, Tanya, 24, female, for two years. Tanya is also in college and goes to a local brick and mortar. As I understand, a few months ago, Tanya gave my son a brand new Xbox Series X, which was a bit odd to me. It's important to note, as Tanya's birthday approached, I gave Ellie $200 to put towards a decent gift for her since she randomly gave him something expensive. Fast forward a few weeks and Tanya abruptly stopped coming over. They are adults, so neither my wife nor myself pressed him as to why. Eventually, Tanya calls my wife to explain that Eli is refusing to return her Xbox. She was a bit confused. Tanya said they didn't break up, but had a fight before she asked for the Xbox back. She also claimed it was never a gift. We spoke to Eli. He assured us it was absolutely a gift, as it was even wrapped. I felt they needed to figure things out on their own. Last weekend, Tanya came over and approached me in our garage. My son and wife weren't home at the time. She had explained everything and then handed me her phone to read their text history. To summarize, one of Tanya's three roommates stole from her. Two days later, the Xbox she had purchased was delivered. Fearing it would get stolen, she asked my son to hold on to it for safekeeping until she found a new place to live. As a direct quote, I haven't even opened it yet. Just sucks. I'm living with a thief. When I come over, let's set it up so at least you can use it. He acknowledged everything she had said. Aside from the entire Xbox ordeal, the more I read, the more livid I became. The things my son said to her, speaking to her in such an extremely condescending manner, I was mortified. This is not the son I raised. I took her into his room and packed up the Xbox. I was in shock to learn about this side of my son I never knew existed. I was asking questions and learned the fight started after he forgot her birthday. Days later, she was very hurt and confronted him. In return, he tossed her a wrinkled up shirt that had a $10 price tag on it. She did so much for his birthday, helped his mom decorate and threw him a party. They arrived home a few hours after she left. He just stepped over the threshold and I went off on him. It's not like I can discipline him anymore, but I damn sure wanted him to feel shame and guilt for his appalling behavior. He kept saying that I didn't understand. She's only telling her side. When I informed him the Xbox was gone, he completely threw a five-year-old tantrum. He called me a fucktard and said I had no business getting involved in his personal relationship. His mother agreed with him and asked what happened to them figuring things out on their own. Legally, she could have just gotten the law involved. Three days later, he put a keyed lock on his door. AITA? NTA, you did the right thing. Your son attempted to steal from his girlfriend while living under your roof. He is in no place to call you names or throw a tantrum. She was rightfully upset. Your son is in the wrong. Your wife is enabling his behavior, which is something you two should communicate with each other about. ETA, if they're adults who can figure it out on their own, then they should act like it. Your son is acting like a kid. Perhaps he should be treated like one in this scenario. If he can't act like an adult at the age of 23, 
It may be necessary for you to get involved so he can take some accountability for his actions before it turns into a lawsuit. NTA, you had stayed out of it until Tanya came over and talked to you directly. On top of it, she showed you the text exchanges between her and your son. I would tell him to remove the lock from his door. If he doesn't pay rent, then that room is still yours. Next story. Throw away. I, 22, male, work at a sandwich shop. My co-worker Chris, 27, male, started working there a few months ago after he was laid off from his last job. It really has sucked for him. He loved that job and after losing it, he had to delay his wedding and move back in with his dad. When we hired him, my boss at the time made it clear that he was going to try and promote him first due to the situation and Chris got his promotion and has been working as a shift supervisor for a few months while he looks for a new role. I get Chris is really bummed about the whole situation. It's very frustrating, but he has a temper. When something gets him off, he tends to blow up a little. Usually it's pretty private, but I've heard him get really short with other people we work with. Last week, I was closing up shop with him and a woman came in about 10 minutes before closing. Chris was taking her order and I heard him start ripping into her. She walked out looking like she was about to cry and Chris was sneering. I asked him what that was all about and then he started yelling at me about how he's the manager and I don't get to tell him what to do. I stopped back to the office and I got to work doing some cleaning when I felt a hand on my shoulder and turned me around. He got in my face and said, You should understand me. I'm serious. Don't ever tell me how to do my job. I told him firmly that he needed to get his hands off of me or I would call the cops and immediately he softened up. And the whole rest of our shift, he was apologizing and we were talking. He really seemed sincere, but... The fact that he put his hand on me crossed the line. As soon as I left, I called our general manager and told him what happened. Over the next few days, I noticed Chris was not on the schedule. Yesterday morning, I came in to find out they came very close to firing Chris altogether, but ended up just demoting him to part-time. While what he did wasn't really excusable, I sort of feel like a jerk because of his situation and the fact that he apologized to me. Even so, I wanted to feel safe at work. And when he put his hand on me and got in my face, I didn't. Did I go too far? NTA. To be fair, yelling at a customer to the point she starts crying for seemingly no reason. Honestly, what could she have said to warrant that? Is enough to cut back the hours. Him touching you just put it over the top. I am sure they reviewed the tape or spoke to him before they made their decision. It's not your fault, and if he wants to keep a job, he has to be nicer. NTA, he abused a customer and then committed an assault on you. He's not mature or stable enough for any type of management or supervisory position, and frankly, your boss should have fired him. He's a major risk. He needs to grow up and get his anger issues under control. Frankly, you should have called the cops on him, but I understand why you didn't. He's reaping the consequences of his own actions, so don't let anyone guilt you, especially not him. R01. Before he became a manager, he and I actually got along really well. I'd never seen him like this until he got promoted. It seems to me like the power kind of went to his head. Stay tuned for more stories from our girl relationships.